Harry Creamer. Um, a question for Jerry or perhaps Roger. Um, the, ho the horse drawn era in transport ended because Henry Ford invented the motor car. Can you tell us a bit about the inventions for a clean energy future that we can look forward to and how putting a price on carbon can help us to get there? Yeah, I, think that, I, I think that's a great question. I, another thing actually that uh, um, you know, helped draw to the end the horse-drawn era is that places like Melbourne and, and Sydney were um, getting pretty difficult to live in because they were filling up with uh, horse acrement and, uh, and so there was a pollution of its own type there that uh, led to a change. Um, and now we've replaced it with another one. I, I, there's, there's, you know, there's been a big body of work that said what are um, all of the things that could be applied to, um, you know, to, to, to lead us into a much lower carbon economy. And um, you know, there's a, there's a you know, scientific piece of work done by Princeton University. You know, so they talked about the, the famous Princeton wedges. Um, basic energy efficiency. Um, in, um, in, in buildings is, is one part of it. Um, um, either finding a solution for coal-fired power stations through carbon sequestration or, or finding another fuel for them. Um, using gas in power stations rather than coal. It's much lower, uh, a much lower carbon footprint. Um, biofuels um, correctly produced is another one. Um, obviously renewables such as solar, um, is is uh, is is part of the uh, potential solution in the future, and um, and and also wind. Uh, one of these 14 wedges, uh, you know, that, that was um, that was used. You know, one is one is um, is also um, uranium, which has a zero, um, virtually a zero footprint when it comes to carbon. So, um, so there's a whole there's a whole host of them. Some of which are ready to go today, and they just need the right incentives. Some of them are actually feasible uh, you know, at, at the, you know, the, the lab level, but they actually need industrial scaling up and that needs, um, you know, that needs appropriate support to actually get it through what I call the, the technology valley of death. But you know, I, I would speculate to say that uh, you know, in, in, a, in a hundred years we could be seeing a world where, um, where solar could be a huge part of the energy equation, um, where um, on-road transport, you know, would be through electric, um, electric cars, um, um, you know, fueled by renewable energy, um, and, uh, and 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 also there could be a lot of liquid fuels around, which are you know, zero carbon through um, second generation biofuels. So they're just some of the things that uh, that you know would would be sort of the macro things that happen. I think yeah, basic um, basic energy conservation at, uh, and and changes of the way that we live. Are going to be fundamental to that because you know we're not going to be able to continue with exactly the same lifestyle. All right, we'll wrap that Jerry up there. And do you want to answer uh, something else? Just, just, just very briefly, coming back to the price of carbon, uh, uh, the question that was asked, and I, I think two things have come very clearly from what Jerry has said. Probably the first of those is that there's no single silver bullet, and if anybody tells you that there is, they're probably trying to sell you something uh, that defies the laws of second law of thermodynamics or whatever. Um, there's no single uh, silver bullet. We can't all wait for fusion energy to arrive. Um, it's been 50 years away, uh, you know, for the last uh, 100, well, 20 years away for the last uh, 60 years. Um, Second point, price of carbon won't necessarily help at the end of pure research or indeed at this point of actually doing the scaling up. Uh, those demand technology support. But what a price of carbon is very good at is pulling that technology through when it's in place. When it's getting to the point where it is a commercial opportunity if you take into account all of the costs, including carbon costs. That's where a price of carbon is critical. There are lots of those technologies which are ready to be used now, which we know can lower our carbon footprint. 
if the market has an incentive to use them, and that's what a price of carbon will do. All right, thank you, Roger. We'll move on. Uh, another